got the headset ready for you, Chris. This one's going to be fun. We're going to hop on the headset because not only is this a big day for you in your in your profession, this is a big day for you as a father as Deuce Vaughn is on the board still heading into day three. What's your thoughts right now, just both from a work standpoint and from a life standpoint for you? Well, um, from a from a life standpoint, um, I've never been as anxious in a draft uh, as as this one, right? A little more, uh, uh, a little more skin in the game on on one of these guys in particular. Um, but it, it's it's been an unbelievable experience so far, and, and uh, you know my wife and and, and Deuce are um, probably. Uh, they're at more calm than me probably because I understand the process, right? So every little thing that happens, you know, I'm kind of analyzing and going, okay, what does this mean and what will that mean? And, you know, so uh, I think they're sitting back and enjoying it and I'm, you know, pulling out any hair that I'm, that, that I would have had. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and professionally, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, when I put on my, my NFL evaluator hat, I see it one way when I, you know, when, when I have my dad hat on, you see it a little different, you know, so it's, you know, it's that, that conflict a little bit of, of, uh, but that's the way the process goes, right? That's the way the process went in recruiting, you know, so that's been a big part of our conversation. Well, I did want to ask you about that because Todd Archer obviously wrote the story, went out on ESPN about how this was one of the first times you, you had to be kind of taken out of the evaluation right. process. And we love Deuce. I mean, we've talked about that yep. on the draft show. I'm not mm -hmm. just saying that because you're sitting in the room. It's I one of the most that. electric, exciting players to watch in this class. But what was that like for you, not being a part of that conversation and having to remove yourself from that? Well, uh, number one, I, 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 uh, I appreciate um, – you know the Joneses and Will and Mitch saying, "Hey, you know, why don't you sit this one out?" Which was, which was good. Now, it, it was good on a couple different levels. Um, the great news is that the way the organization sees him is the way I see him. You know, I mean, just understanding the draft process and how it works. So there wasn't a deal where I'm walking back saying, "You know, I, you know, I, I think he's better than that," or I think, you know, I, I understand the process, um, how it works, and and. I see Deuce in this process the same way the organization does, so that that's that makes it easy. Um, like I said, this this process for Deuce has been a lot like recruiting. One of the first conversations that we had uh, when he decided to come out was I said, "Listen, if you decide to come out, you just have to understand you can go back to school. He's actually got or you actually had two more years of, right. of eligibility because of COVID, and uh, he's a true junior." Um, I said, "You know, if you come out." You've got to be happy with this decision if you go in the third round, fourth round, fifth round, sixth round. Set. When you go, just understand because you can go back to school. And the, and the draft is um, is like the recruiting process. I told him, I said, you're probably not going to be drafted at where your production is. That's just the way. It was the same thing in high school. He was a really good high school player, but, yeah. you know, uh, wasn't as highly recruited as some other people because of the size. Um, but like that situation, I said, listen, the most important thing is where, not when. Just like when you got to Kansas State, it was a perfect spot for you, right? You had a chance to go there and be a guy that was going to touch it 20, 25 times as opposed to going somewhere else where you're 1A, 1B, or you're waiting your opportunity. You know, you kind of had a chance to be the bell cow as soon as you stepped on campus. That's why you're in this situation. So once we get to playing football, everything will take care of itself like it always has. So I, I think he's got a very mature – look at the draft situation now I can imagine last night seeing a run on backs being the yeah. competitor that he is the way that he's wired that he was taking some mental notes you know he he's uh he he's really um even keel so you know he won't verbally say things but I but I know him that the chip probably got a little bit bigger you know and uh it's just excited to uh, get his opportunity when uh, you know in scouting always like we talk about the, the player and like he comes from a family a football family he comes from a family of a coach or in your case a scout and all that I always took that as something as uh, that carried a lot of weight with me how is that with you I mean I know it's your son right. but if you, you know because you've experienced it now but if you see a player that you're evaluating his dad's a coach. Yep. You know, yep. is that something that carries a lot of weight with you? It, it, it does. You know, so you look at bloodlines, you look at, you know, exposure to um, football at a high level. Um, you know, Deuce is very fortunate to be in some, you know, locker rooms to see some great players. I mean, he, 
you know, Darren McFadden, right. Felix Jones, Dexter McCluster. Uh, when I was at Texas, we had several backs that were really good. Yeah. One of the, you know, Quandre Diggs, who I'm really close with, I coached him at Texas, is, I mean, every opportunity Deuce gets to mention him mm -hmm. as a guy that, you know, I saw this guy, the way he went about his business, and, you know, because he was a little bit older at that point, too. Um, but having exposure to that, and seeing what it looks like, right, and uh, being around some really, really good players and seeing how they carry themselves, how they go about their business, that's always a positive. And, and then when there's other prospects that, that we look at that have that type of experience, you think, well, there's probably a level of maturity right. that they have as a player that they're, bringing, right, yeah. that they're bringing with them. You know? So you know, a lot of times we evaluate on these players, like where are they at maturity-wise right. from a football and a personality standpoint, and a, you know, a character standpoint. And so when we see those things, sometimes you go, okay, well, you know, from a maturity standpoint, you know, they're here. And, and that's something that we won't have to worry about or something that we won't have to have an answer for or have a plan for. Assistant Director of College Scouting, Chris Vaughn, joining us on the draft show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to have okay. to take a break on the radio side of things, but we keep going on yeah, the internet yeah, gotta side. Yeah, got to pay bills. DallasCowboys.com. So you're listening to the 2023 NFL Draft on 105.3 The Fan and DallasCowboys.com. So now we're on the internet side of things. <laughs> all right. So we're still streaming. This is all still very much so live and on the record. But it, you talked about the where, not win. Right. And I love that saying because right. it's so true. You could see the success for these players on day three. This is the day of the scouts. We talk about it all the time. Right. Outside of, of do specifically, how excited are you for the team and the franchise today and where they're moving in the direction of where they are? for these prospects to get their name called today? Well, you know, this is, again, when you look at the, you know, you look at the, the history of, of the draft and, and how things usually work, there's a lot of really good players that come out in these rounds. Yeah. You know, um, if, if, if I could find a way to put a value on the intangibles, right, then I'd probably be able to retire and, you know, sit back on a beach and yeah, you know good idea. Drink, you know drink umbrella <laughs> drinks and, we're all trying to get there you know that's that's the thing that um that that you definitely take into consideration but how you value that you know how you put a number on heart people say oh he's got heart well right. how do you put a it's different than a 40 time or a bench press how do you put a value on that and that's what a lot of these guys have right so you know usually one through three you know it's the height weight speed you check off a lot of boxes that you know and then the fourth and fifth, you know, they might not check some of those boxes, but the intangibles make them the player that they are. So there's a lot of good players that may, that 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 get drafted and stick in this league because of those things. So this is this is this is an exciting time to go because you build your team here. This is the, I hate to say it this way, this is the middle class of your team, right? And this is the blue collar guys. These are guys that are the backbone and the, and the depth and the. You know, you win games that way. You know, so this is this is a big day for 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 us and, and our organization to find some really. Are good there players. positions where you feel like the football character, the intangibles, or whatever else, where it's like we're going to be waiting that a lot more? Like maybe quarterback. Does quarterback because of the position of leadership is it like that's going to be weighted a little more heavily than if it's whatever else position? Right. I I think there's levels um, to it, of course, uh, which are kind of. Um, um, you know, talking about, but I think there's, I think there's a standard at every position that you that you know you've got. When you start talking about middle to late round draft picks, they need something that's going to help them stick. You know, uh, because usually it's a guy that's a little undersized, a guy that's forty time wasn't as good as maybe somebody else, wasn't as tall or wasn't as heavy, might need a little more development. So now, the intangibles, in, in my opinion, the intangibles really come into play because what's going to be the thing that makes them. Uh, stick. What's the you know what's the thing that's going to make them go beat out? To be honest with, you, go beat out somebody that might be ex uh, established or somebody that, that's a veteran that you know might have some of those tangibles that are better than their intangible. What's that thing that's going to make them uh, uh, succeed and and, uh, and ascend? Mm -hmm. So I think there's a level for every position, but then there's certain positions like you said. You know there there are certain characteristics that you look for in certain uh, positions. The quarterback being one is leadership, you know, ability, uh, ability to get the team to rally around him and lead, you know, lead 11, you know, 10 grown men, mm -hmm. you know, which is a little bit different than 10, 18, 19 year olds. So, yeah. you know, those 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 intangibles are really important for, for that position. And, and, you know, position to position, there's some 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 things that you really want to be, you know, to stand out about 
players. So we're about to go back on the radio side of things. I know you have a question. We'll ask you probably one or two more yeah. on the radio side, and then we'll let you get out of here. Oh, you got a busy great. day ahead. Yeah, so. no, no, if you, you want to stay, you're more things. than welcome to stay. We, we <laughs> love getting to talk ball We're going to cheerlead for your son all well, day. That's what we're going to do. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Thank you very much. Right there for sure. So we'll we'll step or we'll kind of hear the, the rejoin come back up, and then we'll okay. get you reset here great. on the radio side. Day three of the 2023 NFL Draft is here. We are about 33 minutes away from the start of round four. Then it's into five, six, and seven. It's the day of the scouts, so we're talking to the scouts. Chris Vaughn, the assistant director of college scouting, is joining us currently. Aisha Morrison, you had a question for yes. Chris. So you right. spoke about uh, the opportunity that Deuce had to be the bell cow at Kansas State. Um, we've seen an uptick with the running back position to have some receiving capability. Right. Did you emphasize that with him and his growth and his, and I know maybe just putting bugs in his ear, like, Hey man, this is something that I'm seeing. Like this is something teams are looking for. Is that something that you emphasized with him? Well, that's definitely something we talked about, talked you know, about and, 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 you know, one thing that I will say is that's kind of been his strength also. Okay. And, and, you know, um, we talk about guys with, you know, the ability to catch the ball. Usually they're talking about from the backfield. But, you know, I believe he's got the ability to play in the slot, you know, and run routes in the slot. He's, he's demonstrated that in college. Um, you know, so that aspect of his game is something that might separate him um, from the other guys that kind of fit a different mold. You know, so, you know, traditionally he's not a – three down back because of his size but well what and a lot of that's because they say well what can he do on third down as far as pass protection well you know that's probably not what you want him to do but you can block people different ways you know somebody that's blitzing normally has to cover somebody too so you move them out now you take one blitzer away and different things so there's some ways and there's some creative people out there that do a great job with you know with backs on third down to give them some value the other thing we talked about is special teams catching punts mm -hmm. you know um the he was fortunate to go to Kansas State and be the starter from game two when he stepped on campus, but that also kept him from being a returner, you know, because he was the bell cow on offense. So now that was a big question, you know, what well, can he catch punts? And so worked on that really hard during all, you know, during this time to, to get better at that. Darren Sproles uh, has, of course, has been a great mentor to Deuce uh, after he met him. And that was one of the things that he told him is that when I first came in the league, I had to prove myself as a returner. And then I got my opportunity to show what I could do as a, as a runner. So, of course, that, that, you know, that stuck with Deuce and said, you know what, I've really got to go make my name in, in this uh, um, you know, facet of the game, too, to maybe earn more opportunities to get the, the touches. You know, so, again, you talk about value. You know, it's the two things you can do. I'm a runner and I'm also a sp you know, specialist. So we've talked about those things. That's a great question. We've talked about those things and just how your diversity is what will be appealing to you know, different teams. And that's why I think different teams will look at him differently based on what they have on their roster and an offensive guy going, well, here are the matchups. You know, here's a matchup that we can use Deuce in this role. So that, that's a great question. We, we definitely have discussed that and talked about it. So if Deuce is four or five inches taller, I don't think he's even available right now. <laughs> right now. Just personally. That's what his We're mom says all the time. <laughs> and, and, and I have to remind her th that – but if he was, he might not be the same guy. No, that's very fair. Ah, you know, yeah, I mean, the yeah. wiring is because of, you know, the the chip on the shoulder, the yeah. you know, the 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 underdog, the, you know. But but my wife looks at it exactly right. that. My dad the exact same way. You know. But I love. I, that think, you I think said the that. wife's right. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> no, she probably always. I mean, I think happy I think, life, I, think right? if, <laughs> I think if the player was three four inches taller, he'd still be a great player. But to, I don't. I to mean, Brian's I, point, like Brian's talked to us about this outliers, and it right. seems like there's a lot in this class. We talked about. That with Mitch, with the right, the wide receiver yes, specifically, yeah. the shorter yes. stature. So the quarterback, the, cor the quarterback, yeah, Alabama quarterback. No doubt, yeah. sure. Al and then Jaron Hall, another one for BYU, right. a little yeah. bit of a smaller guy. So when you're stacking your board, and you're building these teams. Mm -hmm. What, what? How do you balance that? Because you don't want a team full of outliers, but you also turn on the tape, and it's like this guy might be small, but he's a hell of a player. Right. That, that, and that's the battle. That, that's the battle. You know, um, to to keep the value the right spot. You know, uh, for a player um, that's undersized. You know, you, out. You know, there's there's reasons why we know who some of those outliers are, right? Because there's not many of them. Right. So when you're when you're you know when you're investing. You know, is this the guy, is this going to be the next guy, undersized outlier guy that we all talk about? Well, for every one that we have, there's a lot of them that haven't been, you know, hadn't turned out to be that. So it's always the investment piece, 
you know, that you're that you're kind of battling with, even when there's a great player, is he going to be the next one that's an outlier? Because they only come along, you know, you can name them, you know, Terrence Sproles. Okay, well, who's the who's the you know, and that, so that's Westbrook. The, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. but there's a handful of them. You know, there's not a hundred of them walking around. Yeah. So you're kind of betting is this outlier going to be the next that guy to go take him at that spot? So you know, yeah, your son could be that guy though. He could be the one guy when they say, hey, he's a 5'5 five, five running back. Well, you watch the tape. You know, you watch what he does. You watch how he hides behind the line, and next thing you know, it's a seven-yard game. And the receiving ability, your point about yeah, being I mean, able to yes. do multiple things. Yeah, I, I'm an old crusty scout from back in the day. We would have never – and Green Bay would have never thought about a 5'5 five, five, or 5'10 quarterback, a 5'5. Five, five. You could play with these guys now. If you yes. get creative enough, you can play with these guys. And you don't – I mean, I've, I've had to change my attitude about the smaller player. Yeah. I mean, with the Packers, like, we, it, it, when we put them on the board, all the smaller guys were getting vacuumed off yes. the floor. Their tags were so low on the ground. <laughs> yeah. But, but nowadays you have to think about that. You have to say, man, if a coach could get creative with my guys here, we can have some success with these guys. Yeah. And we're not lying to you, by the way. We are cheerleading for well, James Vaughn yeah. because you can go well, back and you. watch the tape. If you want to watch all the draft shows to find it, you can. I don't, I don't know which one it was, but we have talked about him in extensive. Uh, Final question you. before we let you go. Mm -hmm. But you hear about these milestone moments as a parent throughout right. life. Right. Has there been a number one milestone moment for you in football specifically with Deuce? And when he gets that phone call today, where would that rank on uh, the list? Probably, probably number one. Yeah. You know, um, it, it's almost like – your child trying to make the Olympic team or, oh, yeah. um, you know, so, so how do you feel when you get that call? Your, your son made the Olympic team or uh, he's, you know, so it, it'll be, it, you know, I, we had a dinner the other night and, you know, we kind of, I got emotional there, you know, there's been, there, so there's been a lot of, a um, lot of stories about, you know, this dynamic with, with me and him. And so as long as I'm talking, I'm good. As soon as I stop talking, like, the, the eyes start to well up, and then it's like either drop or go back in because they're just like <laughs> sitting there. Uh, I imagine, you know, the guy's been joking with me, like, and I'm like, yeah, it, it'll, I'll, I'll yeah, I was going to ask you, how, did, how, how the guys been around you about that? They do been, they, it's like a no hitter in baseball. They don't talk to you, <laughs> or, 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 or do they just, don't or, or, it. or do guys walk up and say, your son's a hell of a player? Well, yeah. they, they do, and, yeah. and, and um, you know, that's humbling. You know, it, it's funny. One of our scouts the other day said, "I can't wait to hear his name because I feel like an uncle." Yeah. yeah. You know, that's going. You know, so you know that's that's the other great thing about you know working at this place, right? Because it is an extended family. It is a family. So everybody's kind of you know sitting around and, and and waiting, you know, to to see where it falls for him. And I, I imagine it's funny because I might not be the only one with tears. I'm, I'm, you know, we I got a great group of guys I work with, and, and they're pretty invested in this thing with him too to see where he goes. So, well, I'm going to throw my pen across the room if he ends up in the division. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't not, want, I don't let's not let that happen. Let's not well, let that happen. We're going to yeah. not manifest that <laughs> yeah. even either at all. here or nowhere else, and not in the division. <laughs> that, that kind of thing. Well, guys, I really, I really appreciate uh, yeah. all those kind words. We really appreciate it, Chris. We appreciate you coming in, but big day for you. Big go day. enjoy it. Get after it. Go get some draft picks one of them right. Deuce Vaughn that'd be That's great <laughs> uh, assistant director of college scouting and and again congratulations thank you. deepest dark uh, part of our heart I mean to thank you, you so much not about, the darkest but not the yeah, darkest but the brightest the, 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 the brightest, brightest the part of our house thank you. how about that thank Chris you Vaughn much. joining us there he goes